All right, everyone. Um, I'm going to show a very quick demo on how Sunkable works and um, uh, show you a couple of examples. The example might be very simple, and but hopefully that gave you some uh, high level ideas on what Sunkable can do and what are the steps to make a mobile application using Sunkable. And I'll also point out some other resources for you to look more examples and, and learn more about some of the, uh, you know, uh, advanced features about Sunkable. All right. So first of all, you know, what is Sunkable? Um, it is an educational platform, but I think it was designed to be an educational one, but now it's really not just for educational purpose. I know a lot of teams and companies, they use this one to do the prototyping. Uh, or if your app is not really too complicated, and this one can be used to um, do the production version, you can even publish the app to the Google Play or Apple Store. Uh, that's also an option. Uh, some of you might be familiar with something called app, uh, MIT App Inventor, uh, which is very similar to Sunkable. Actually, this is the very first tool that allows us to do the mobile application using the block coding. And then uh, there are a lot of uh, good projects can do. And um, we actually also tried uh, this topic for different classes before. However, um, I have to say that the, the main advantage of Sunkable over MIT Render, uh, number one, Sunkable also supports iOS very well. Um, MIT App Inventor was mostly for Android, but Sunkable, you can also run the same thing in the iOS. Secondly, it's very easy to run um, the Sunkable app compared with uh, MIT Inventor. MIT Inventor used to have uh, to run this thing in the actual Android emulator or with a phone. That's a little bit uh, tricky. Uh, sometimes we don't have the devices or the, the uh, installing the emulator is also very, very heavy. But this one, everything can be done in the web page, in the browser, it's super convenient. That's why recently when, when we are doing this kind of block-based development from a web application, Sunbo is always the very first choice. Okay, so uh, let me show you a very quick Hello World example on how it works. So we can create a new project, new app. Um, I'll do a very simple like mass quiz app. Okay, and then just for uh, education category. And then with that, I'm going to create this application. And then once you create an application, you will actually see a very typical you know, this drag and drop type of UI that allows you to make a mobile application. You know, on the left hand side, you can see all the different widgets you can use. On the right hand side, you can have all these properties, um, you know, to specify the UI. And you can also do the coding and you click on the blocks and then that switch to the coding and everything is called block based. So it's actually very straightforward to do. All right, so go back to the design. And I am going to make a very simple like a quiz app. Maybe we can randomly generate a quiz question, a math question, and then that user to input the answer to check if the answer is correct. Okay, so something very simple. And I will, uh, you can see, you can drag the button. And just like this, very easy. You can, you can move it around. You can actually change the attribute and everything. Okay, so uh, we will need, for example, uh, to show a question, right? So I'm going to put a subject on a label. Label is something to display a tax. All right, this will be the question. You know, it's going to show you, uh, for example, uh, you can change the tax here. It's going to show you a question. And you change that one. And also you can actually do more specific, for example, three plus nine. And something very simple if you want to make uh, like a mass um, quiz app for the younger kids. All right, so you can change the size and then draw, drag and drop the position very easily. And the button, you can also put it somewhere. You can say this will be the submit answer. Okay, and then you should have a place to um, input your answer. So you're gonna use the text input. So I'm gonna drag this one onto the screen. So you're gonna type the answer here, All right? As you can see, you can try to align them. Everything is just, you know, uh, directly in the, in the UI editor is very easy to use. So uh, type here, that's the hint, and then type, you know, that's your answer, um, your answer here, okay? Uh, and then you type the answer, you click on the button, we'll check if that's correct or not. Okay, so that's it. So if you have this UI done, you can then run the app right here, okay? Web preview, click on the button to run it, and you can see that's how the app will look like. And if you click on the button right now, nothing will happen. 
All right. You can also run your app with a phone. And then what you need to do is download the Sunkable app. Okay. For example, if you have a Google uh, Android phone, and then you can search for uh, Sunkable. All right, this one here. And then what this app does is that it can connect your account and then you can uh, see the changes you make on this app right here. The change will be delivered and shown up on the actual device app. So you can basically test the same thing inside uh, using your physical device. It works for both Android and iPhone. Okay, uh, in the beginning, you don't have to bother to do that. Just click on the button here to run. It's very, very convenient, um, super easy to use. Okay, now let's see how we can program this and to make this function work. All right, so let me go back and to editing. Now, first of all, we need to actually always randomly generate a question. So that's the first thing we need to do. And then, so I'm gonna go to the blocks. Okay, so here is how you can you know, program with the block language. It's very similar to Scratch. Okay, very easy to use. Um, now, in this case, let's think about uh, maybe we can do another button first to generate a question to go to the next question, right? So I'm gonna click on a button here. Um, so this will be the submit, and then this will be next. Okay, we'll click on the next button. It's gonna generate a question. So I tried that. And then submit is gonna check the answer. Was the answer uh, it check. We're going to show you whether it's correct or not. So this is going to be the result. Okay. So we'll do a very simple UI. You can always go back to polish it later on. Okay. So now go to the blocks. Let me show you how it works. So for example, I'm going to check uh, the button one. Okay. Button one should be the very first button I did for the submit. So this one says button one. So I'm going to say button one. When you click on this button one, as you can see when the button one is clicked, I'm gonna do something, all right? So I just wanna show a hollow example. For example, I'm gonna show, okay, the result is you know to be determined. So what I can do is I need to figure out what is the result is. So the result is label two right here. So I go back here, I will say label two. And then when you click on label two, you can see these are all the things you can do. And uh, we need to set the text of label two to be something else, okay? Result is and the review. Okay, just a very simple hollow example. So now I go back to the app. I'm gonna run my app again. And in this case, I'm gonna click on submit. The moment I click on submit, it actually shows you the result is and the review. So that kind of shows how the code works with the UI. And I need to make this one a little bit longer so that it can show all the text. Okay, so now with that, I can then start to do more kind of programming. So uh, in order to generate a question, I need two variables. So I can go to variables. I'm gonna define one variable called number one and uh, go to math. You can um, specify some kind of a random number or I'm gonna set something to be zero first, okay? And in the same way I can duplicate it, I'm gonna create another variable, which is uh, number two, okay? Now I got both variables here. So what I want to do now is whenever I click on the other button next, okay, I want to generate this question and show it in the label. So I'm going to go here when the button two is clicked. Okay, I'm going to generate a random number, set the number one and two to be a random number. So I'm going to go to variables and here I'm going to say set variable number one to be some kind of random integer from one to 100. Okay, you can always change the range. And you can do the same thing. I'm, I'm going to duplicate it, go here, and also a random number from one to two, one to 100. And but this one, I'm going to change it to be number two. All right, so that's how you can generate two numbers here. Um, but then I need to form the actual question. So, which means I need to change the label one because the label one is the one I'm using to display the question. So, this is here, label one. So, Label one just need a string. So I need to put all of this together and plus all the question, uh, colon, those kind of characters. Okay, so what I can do is I can go to text. Text means string. And I, I need to join all of this string together. So I'm gonna do a join, okay? Uh, join, I need to start with a question, colon. And then next one, I need to put my variable, number one. Okay, so I go to the variable. 
number one. As you can see, as you program this, it's basically the same. Oh, sorry, here should be in the second part. It's basically the same as you write a Python program. The difference is you gotta figure out the, the blocks, how to do it. Sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's just not as straightforward as Python, but the logic is exactly the same thing. So when you do basic join more stuff, so I'm gonna add some other items here and uh, go back. So I will need to have, for example, a plus, Sign. Let's assume we're only dealing with addition. And then from there, I'm going to duplicate this one. This is going to be number two. And finally, I need another question mark. Okay. So that's how you can change the text. Let's test it. So go back to the design. I'm going to run the app right here. I'm going to click on next. As you can see, as every time I click on that, the question, the numbers, got changed okay um so that's that's a very simple example all right um now let's see how we check the answer so i can type something here right now when i do it nothing happened what we should do is load the value you type here compare that with the real answer and then tell you right or wrong so uh, obviously we need some kind of if statement conditional statement to do it so back to this button okay so we need to actually check the correct answer Okay, so we will need to say go to uh, logic. Oh, sorry, actually go to control, and we're gonna say if we got something right, and I, I'm gonna change this one to be result correct. Um, but if you did something wrong, I'm gonna do the else statement to say this is incorrect. All right. Now the major thing we need to figure out here is how do we check the correct answer. So what we need is some kind of logical comparison to see if um, the, the answer you typed, which coming from the text input and get the actual text, if that is equal to, let's see how to put this box here. Um, okay, if, the, the answer you inputted equal to the actual correct answer, which is number one plus number two. So I need to do a little bit of mass calculation here. Okay, and then I'm gonna put number one, number two. So it's basically the same as you write um, a uh, Python program or other language, but you have to turn that into a block to form this kind of uh, statement, all right? I think that's that's it. And I'll go back to the design. I run this application again. And then, so I'm gonna create a new question. So this one, the answer is 167. Okay, I'm gonna submit and that answer is correct. But then if I do something wrong and I'm gonna submit again, that is incorrect. Okay, so I go to the next question. So this answer is 90. So the answer is correct. That if 95, that answer is incorrect. So uh, that is the example I want to show you very quick. Again, I did everything very fast. I just want you to have a good feeling on how this whole thing works. To summarize, to make, mo make a mobile application with Sunkable, um, really there are only two steps you need to deal with. One is to make the UI using all the widgets. And then two is to make the app interactive by using blocks and by bringing all the data and the variables and to do the things you want to do, okay? So uh, it is not very um, difficult to understand, but same time, as you can see, they have a lot of uh, features you can do here that also takes some time to, you know, especially in the beginning, you probably want to search for the block to see what you can do um, and then try to map, you know, some of the traditional program you did in Java or Python into this block coding, you know, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Okay, but uh, the more example you've seen, the more you will realize that this tool is actually pretty uh, powerful. Okay, so uh, that is just a very quick example. Okay, um, in general, when you're making an app, I would recommend, again, you start from a UI design and then try to come up with the, the rest of the solutions and the code and blocks.
right? So with that, maybe I'll just show you a little bit more, a um, little bit slightly more complicated example um, uh, so that you got to see how the whole app development works. Um, again, I'm going to try to make this one very short, very fast. So um, a few years ago, one team um, from our Capoli, uh, the college team, they made a project called a $5 lunch. Okay, what they're trying to do um, is that they want to find out on campus uh, all the food that you can buy uh, under $5 for lunch. And it's a very simple like UI. You know, what you want to do is just simply search um, the budget, you know, $5, $6, and it's going to show you all the items that below that, that price range. So it's very straightforward. Now, uh, when we start to do this kind of application, now you can really think about the whole app with different screens. Okay, so we can, you know, do some very simple design. Uh, this will be our splash screen. It's basically just some kind of a logo here. And then to getting started, okay, or you can also let the program to automatically turn into the uh, next screen. Okay, so that's just a little logo screen, we call it splash screen. And then once you get to the next screen, uh, it's gonna be our main screen. Okay, I'll call it home screen. So what this one does, very simple. Um, you need a, some kind of input box to type the budget. All right, so I'm gonna draw another box here. Okay, this will be your budget. And then there's the button to search. Okay, and then after that, we got a list of you here to show you all the results. I be item one, item two, and then you can buy. All right, so that's gonna be how the app works. Uh, if you want to do a little bit more, uh, I can say that if I click on one of the items, I can go to a detailed page. So I'm going to make one more screen. I'll call this one detailed page screen. All right, this one is going to show you basically the, the details. Okay, so maybe the name and price or maybe some images. Okay. And then you can also go back. All right, so that is our app design. So any kind of application, you can quickly just draw into this kind of a design like this. Obviously you can also use better tools, Figma, very popular or some other you know, professional UI design so that all works. But um, you know, in the very beginning, you can, you can simply you know, scope and design an app like this. It gave you some good idea on what you might you need to do in the finish and how much um, it's gonna take. All right, so with that design, let's actually go back to the app Sunkable and then try to make it. Okay, I'm gonna start something new from scratch again. And this will be a, we'll call it a $5 match. Okay. Category will be uh, food, all right? And then create a new project. Again, I'll try to do this one very quickly. So you can see this is not really too complicated. And then starting from the first screen, it's a logo screen with a button. All right, so I can just put a little image here and I can show you a button here. Let's say this button is get you know, started. Okay, uh, for image, I think they uh, can let you do upload a file or just use the URL. Okay, so we'll go to image, Google, I'll call, I'll, I'll do a dummy like, icon or logo, I'll call it, you know, a food app logo, okay? Just something to show the idea, you know, something very generic. Um, so maybe I'll use this one here. Let's see if that works. I'm gonna copy the image URL and go back to Sunkable. I'll try to put the URL here. Yeah, so that works. And not a very good, let me change the size. Okay, not perfect, but you know, you see the example, you can you can definitely get a better one, okay? Uh, all right, so here is get started. I also put the button bigger. Again, just try to show you how the UI works, okay? There are a lot of detail you can later on polish. And then uh, this app, we need the second screen. Once you click on the button to start, and then you can go to the home screen. So I'm gonna work on a home screen. I'm gonna add another screen right here. 
Okay, as you can see, very straightforward. And then next query, we will need a input box. We will need a button. All right, and then lastly, we also need a list of you. This is a very important. This is gonna show you all the results vertically. Okay, and then here is where you type the budget. And here you, you'll hit the button search. Okay, I change those. This is gonna be searching. And then this will be our budget. Okay. And finally, I need another screen for the details page. And this one, I'll just make it very, very simple. Okay, so uh, just some labels to show the results. Okay, so this will be the name. And then we need a price. And then finally, we, we can also show image if we can. Okay, I'll, I'll put the image right here. And then finally, we do a button. And this button is good to go back. All right, so very quickly, I kind of mock up this whole design based on my uh, design the slides. And now you need to code, code it. Otherwise, this app is not going to do anything. For example, I go to app one, I'm going to start to run my app. I can see everything, but click on this one, nothing will happen. Right, so I will go back to editing. The first one is very easy, click on the button. I wanna to go to the next screen. Okay, so from here, I go to the blocks. Again, I'll try to do this one as quick as I can. Uh, click on the button. When the button one is, is click, I'm gonna to go to control. There is a navigation function. I'm gonna navigate this one to the next screen, which is screen two. Okay, so go back to design, run the app, click on the button, and now it shows the screen two. So very convenient. Now, this is a very simple to do compared with if you use Flutter or other tools, Android, native development, you have to write many lines of code, okay? So go back to editing. Let's focus on the screen two. All right, so screen two is mainly about getting an input, search, and the filter the result and show in here, right? So in order to do this, uh, we will need to use a lot of data. Now, in this example, I'm not gonna show too much about the database, I will just, Assume that we have some local data set here we can use, but in the next lesson, I'll show you more about the database. So uh, with that, I'm gonna create a variable, I initialize a variable. I'll call this one the food items. And every food item, we want to have um, uh, some uh, attributes. Okay, to, in order to help you understand this, this program here, uh, I might want to create a very quick Python program first to illustrate the um, workflows about this whole search and database idea. So that way you can get the, the, the steps and then you will see how we can map everything back into some couple unit block coding. So for example, here, I'm gonna do a food items. It's gonna be a list. It's gonna be my database saving all the food. Every food I'm gonna put by name. For example, it's a you know, Starbucks. We have a Starbucks on campus. And the price is going to be you know, $4.99, okay? So that's one item I use in dictionary to save all the attributes. And then in the same way, I can do more. And uh, we have what, Subway? We have some you know, round table pizza. All right, I'll just put three, okay? Now, what I need to do now is I need to do a search function search by budget budget information so i gave you a budget and then we want to match anything that's below uh, that budget all right so what i can do i can do a very quick for loop for each item in the food item here if the item price is less than equal to the budget we provided Okay, we, that means we want this item. So I need to collect the results. I'll create an empty string. So if that's the case, I'm gonna put that into the string. Okay, finally, I'm gonna return the result. Very simple. Uh, iteration, check the price, add the result back to the list and return the list. Okay, so let's try that. So I'm gonna try to search my budget, I'm gonna do $5. 
I'm gonna run my program. That shows you the Starbucks because Starbucks is the only one that's under five. And I'm gonna to try to show $50 and run this again and everything shows up. And if I wanna do $6, so only two of them, All right? So this is the kind of logic you wanna do in the app, but you will see if you use the blocks, it's gonna be quite different. Okay, blocks, you know, first of all, we also need to set this kind of a items here. So you can do that also. So this variable food item is gonna be a list. So I'm gonna create a list, All right? Um, since this one needs a dictionary, you can also consider that as an object. So what you can do in Sunkable, you have this object and then you can actually create an object. Every object can have multiple attributes and properties. Okay, so we can just do this one here, just to add more attributes, more field. Okay, so I'm gonna do three of this field. Um, besides the name and price, also do a URL, just show some image later on, okay? So uh, the name will be a string. Then the price will be a number. And then URL will be another string. So for the URL, I'll just try to start something very quick. So we need the Starbucks. Okay, so I'll just randomly pick something here, copy the address, I'll save it into a, okay. So in the same way, I'm gonna duplicate it. Uh, I'll do one more and then one more here. Okay, so this will be the pizza. And then six ninety nine, and then this will be the subway. It will be five ninety nine. All right. So go back here. I'll do a pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do something very simple here. Copy the URL. Here the pizza URL. Let's send it. Now hopefully this one works. And then also we need mm, subway. So we try to use this one here. All right, so that's how we build a database. I can see this part is totally equivalent to this definition we wrote here. Okay, so now what we need to do is that when we click on the button to search, we will need to do the logic here. Okay, so it's actually exactly the same. Okay, let's see how it works. So. When you click on a button to search, when the button is clicked, okay? And we need to iterate the whole list and then check all the attributes. So there is something for uh, control. There should be something called for each item in the list. Okay, that's how you do the iteration. Our list is called food items. So you go to the variable, find this food items. For each element in this item list, now we will need to um, check the pricing, right? Uh, the price we will need to use the if statement again. So go to control. If um, we need to logical compare, okay? If the price is less or equal to uh, to the one that um, you you type in the box, so that's going to be coming from the input the text input right here. Okay, so I'm gonna use that one. So if it's less than the, the input budget that you selected, and then we're gonna add that into the result list. So this one here will be coming from this item because that's for each item in the list. However, we only need to compare the pricing. So use an object, there's something called get a property of the price, which come from this item J. Okay, so this line here is exactly the same as what I showed in here. Okay, this line. If the item price is less or equal than budget, and and this one looks definitely a little bit more, but um, but the idea is exactly the same. Okay, now if that's the case, we need to collect this item, put it into the results. So I will need to uh, create a result page, a result list. So I create another variable. I will create another variable called results. 
you know, and then initially this will be empty. Okay, now for the result, we can then just add the item to, um, to the list. So let's see where the add function. Add function is, insert right here. So we're gonna insert into this result, um, into the result list, and then we're gonna put, uh, we're gonna show the name there. Right? So I'm gonna duplicate this one to grab the value of name, not price. Okay, so that's how you can you know, form the list. So lastly, if you wanna show all the results in the list, okay, you have to actually set the list of you. Uh, all you need to do is set items, okay, here to be the list, which has the, which is equivalent to the result. So I go to variable, find out my result. Okay, okay so let's actually give it a try. I'm gonna run my application right now. I'm already in the second screen. So I am gonna type the, the budget five. I'm gonna do search. As you can see, it shows Starbucks. If I'm gonna do type 50, search again, and it shows all of them. Oh, but it that actually doesn't re reset the previous one. So what we need to do is go back. Uh, once you click on a button, we will need to uh, put this one to be empty. So variable set, set the result every time to be empty so that you don't see the duplicate results. Okay, so go back to run this again. So we're gonna go 50, search, I'm gonna do five, search, and six, so they go different ways. All right, so that is a very simple example, but it shows more about how to deal with data, which a lot of our app probably need to do. Okay, now with that, the last thing I wanna do is I click on a button, I wanna to go to the next page and then just show you more details. Okay, so that part isn't very difficult. So what we need to do is that we need to program with the list of you, right? So go to the list of you. If you ever click on an item, okay, and I need to go to the next screen, which is the navigation to the screen three. Uh, this part is easy. However, I do need to know which one you click on. Uh, so this one here, I actually told you which item you picked and then what is the index. So we need a global variable to save that. So I'm gonna create another variable. I'll call it uh, selected item, All right? So this will be uh, coming to empty, just empty object, just create an object here. And then if you click on a button and uh, the item, I am going to uh, give you this, assign, assign this uh, variable Right, before we go to the next screen to see the selected item is coming from this index, okay? So we need to use a list and uh, we need to select this one here to get the item from the list based on the index you selected. Okay, so then you go to the next screen. This is select item will have the um, selected item information. So right here in the third screen, there's nothing we need to do. So if you say that if this screen starts, okay, I will need to look into uh, this uh, selected item. I need to load all the name, pricing, and image information. So the first label here is the name. So this one will be the name. And uh, uh, we need to go to the object here to get attribute of name based on the select item. Okay, now if I duplicate it, price, and then finally we got image. Set image to be URL. Okay, so let's see if that works. And then I'm gonna go back to all the way to screen one, okay? So this is the starting screen, get started. I'm gonna search for $50 and I got all the items. I'm gonna go to Subway, click on that. And uh, this one isn't working. And then let me go back. Oh, we didn't do the go back. Let's actually check why it's not working. So go to the screen three. 
I will need to first of all do this back button and I'll go back to the previous screen. I'll just do a quick navigation to screen two. And then we're trying to set, oh yeah. So first of all, we need to set label one and label two, okay. And then both we'll select item, this is the name, this is the price and also the URL. Okay, so it looks at like this part is right. We just want you to know, make sure that the selected item is correct. That one coming from, oh yeah, this is the mistake. So, so this is not this dummy list. It should have coming from the uh, food items right here. All right, so let me run this one more time. I'm gonna do 50 again, search. I'm gonna do subway. Here is subway price image. Okay, go back. I do Starbucks, go back and I do pizza. All right, so that can cool this demo. As you can see, I try to go through something very quickly. Um, you know, obviously if you wanna see some of the detail, you might wanna pause the video and then look through some of this code here. Uh, but I just want to see how overall you make a navigation using Sunkable. Uh, it's definitely a very powerful too, but you can see some of the code here get a little bit tricky. You got to figure out the block way to do this. Um, but you know, if you do in Python, it's actually really, really simple. Okay, so hopefully that helps. I will also uh, put some resources for you to learn more about Sunkable and uh, and then try to use that one to evaluate if this is good for you to uh, finish your project.